On Tuesday, Activision released Call of Duty Mobile, and it is, in my opinion, the best first-person shooter in the world of mobile gaming. It is completely free to play and has tons of options to customize your character and optimize your playstyle. But all this complexity can make it harder to get started, so I am going to quickly run through 131 tips and tricks for the game. Before I get into the different game types, I recommend going to your settings and then clicking on the sensitivity tab. As you scroll down, you will see tons of different settings. I would not recommend touching any of these unless you are customizing them to your playstyle. Rather, I recommend choosing a sensitivity preset. If you are a casual gamer and don't plan to play this game for more than a couple months, I recommend choosing the low sensitivity preset. Having a lower sensitivity will immediately make you better at getting kills, but as you climb the ranks, that low sensitivity sensitivity will eventually give you a disadvantage. If you are a hardcore gamer and you think you might be good enough to go pro, then you will probably want the high sensitivity preset. This will immediately make you much worse at the game, but over time as you practice a lot and eventually get used to that higher sensitivity, you will be able to do things that others cannot. However, if you are not already a pro and you are older than 20 years old like me, then your reflexes are already on the decline and I do not recommend choosing a higher sensitivity. Sensitivity. That being said, Activision added the option to increase your rotation acceleration, which means the further and faster you move your joystick, the more sensitivity you experience. If you are a decent gamer, I recommend keeping the sensitivity at mid and then increasing the speed acceleration just a little bit to 180. Then I recommend clicking on the controls tab, choosing custom layout, and then moving your operator skill down just a little bit so it's easier to click quickly. I then recommend moving your crouch and jump buttons a little bit Bit further away from this corner to make it easier on your thumbs. Then I recommend moving the scope button up a little bit and moving your knife here. This button does not show up often, but when it does, you need to be able to press it quickly, so having it closer helps a lot. Lastly, I chose to hide the sprint button because this other one is a lot easier to use. So this is, in my opinion, the best two finger configuration. Obviously, this is not a great configuration if you are a three or four finger mobile gamer, but since most people only use their two thumbs, I'm not going to cover those configurations in this video. Call of Duty Mobile is a free-to-play game, but they do make you work for it. As you play, you will get experience towards levels, which unlocks new weapons, operator skills, grenades, and perks. You unlock your first full loadout at level 12, and then your next ones at 27, 43, 75, and 105. For a full list of everything you can unlock, click on your picture and scroll through what you get at each level. Currently, the highest level in the game is 150. As you use these new weapons of the game, they also can gain experience and level up. There are 10 levels total and they don't get better stats as they level up, but with each level you unlock attachments that allow you to customize the weapon. Because these attachments have static increases, it is generally better to choose attachments that buff the weakest element of that gun. For example, if a gun has a high rate of fire but low damage, increasing its damage is going to be far more effective than increasing its rate of fire. This of course is not always true. In the case of the sniper rifle, you may want to increase its damage to make sure to secure that kill, or if a specific weapon attachment works best for your playstyle. In this video, I'm not going to get into those details because I'm just covering general tips. However, I'm really enjoying this game, so if this video does well, I will make a playlist of the best modifications for each weapon. This brings us to the first game mode, Frontline. Frontline is a classic style of 5 versus 5, where each team has its own side of the map. This makes it a lot easier to predict where your enemies are going to be, which makes Frontline the easiest game mode. It has a lot of different maps so it's best to have one long range and one short range loadout preset to choose from. Those two presets can even be the same gun but you might use different modifications on that gun depending on the size of the map. Perks are highly dependent on your playstyle but as you are figuring that out my recommendation is to use the perks silent steps, toughness, and quick recovery because they are a very powerful combo. Since frontline has set sides finding a way to flank the enemy is the best way to get a ton of kills quickly. However this usually puts you on the enemy side so you don't want to linger there for too long. Ideally your team would come in and close that gap because the ultimate goal in frontline is to establish good secure positions close to the enemy's spawn point. Now you don't want to be too close because they spawn with five seconds of invulnerability but if you get a good position just beyond that area your team can easily create a deadly crossfire that the enemy ends up getting funneled into. Each map is a little bit different so if you guys really get into this game with me then I will also make a playlist 
explaining the best tactics for each map of the game. The second game type is called Team Deathmatch. This is very similar to Frontline, but rather than a designated spawn point, you spawn near your team, even if your team is in a bad position. Also, the games are only to 40 points rather than 50. The ultimate goal in this game type is to make sure your team establishes good positioning. Because Call of Duty Mobile has such a high damage to hit point ratio, good positioning is usually not a location. While some locations are better than others, there are very few locations that are good enough to justify staying in that same place because the enemy team's knowledge of where you are will give them the upper hand. In fact, even if you have the perfect hiding place where no one can see you, all it takes is one accidental shot in your direction and your entire health bar will light up, alerting that enemy to where you are. So because of this, the best teams are able to keep a good positioning while moving throughout the map so the other team never catches on. This consists of finding good vantage points while staying close enough together that you can defend each other when one of you gets attacked. If you are leading your team as you move, one tactic that helps a lot is starting to shoot before you round the corner. Personally, I think this is kind of stupid and I hope they change this, but regardless of how I feel, it has made a big difference in how many kills I get and I've noticed that most of the people that kill me are using this tactic. Perhaps if Activision buffs the quick draw attachment, it will make this tactic less needed. The third game type is Domination, which is your classic zone of control game type. In Domination, there are three zones, one by each team and one in the middle. Every zone your team captures gives one point for every four seconds that you keep that zone. 100 points wins the game, so essentially the game is just a race for which team can own 400 seconds worth of zones first. Since the game is still brand new, the tactic that I recommend is sending three of your teammates to skip the middle zone and run immediately towards the zone closest to the enemy spawn point. I've noticed that most teams don't guard their initial base, so instead of fighting it out at zone B, just send two people to slow the other team down while capturing their initial zone. This will end up with your team owning two zones while the other team only has the middle zone, which is usually the hardest zone to defend. This is of course not a sure win, but it will give you a significant head start. After that, it is important to not focus on kills. Even though kills are important for getting MVP, they have no bearing on winning the game. Rather, focus on capturing zones or defending the ones you have. In fact, baiting someone to chase and kill you while your team owns more zones can help you so much that it can make the difference between winning and losing a game. After one of the teams reaches 50 points, the two teams will restart on opposite sides while keeping the points that they already have. After that, the first team that reaches 100 points will win the whole match. The fourth game type is called Search and Destroy. This consists of 10 rounds, but you only have one life in each round. The first five rounds are with one team trying to detonate a bomb in one of two locations while the other team attempts to stop them. Then after five rounds, the defending team has five chances to plant the bomb. The game is over as soon as one of the teams wins six rounds. In my experience, most of these games just end with whichever team kills the other five first. But sometimes the bombs play a role. If you are the team with the bomb, it is very important that you never take the same route more than twice. If your team is really talented, you might get away with it, but taking the same route over and over again gives the other team a significant advantage, so I strongly recommend changing it up every three rounds. The fifth game type is a battle royale. There are a lot of battle royale games out there, and in my opinion, Call of Duty Mobile took the best attributes of each of those games and combined them into the perfect blend while simultaneously staying true to the Call of Duty genre. That being said, there are six main things that are different about the Call of Duty Battle Royale. The first one is that you will be asked to choose between one of seven classes, so it is important to know how to be successful at multiple classes. The Ninja is, in my opinion, the best class for a solo player because it reduces your sound when moving and you have a grappling hook which is very effective for getting out of trouble quickly. The Scout is a much better team player because he has the sensor dart that you can shoot revealing hostile players in that position and then has the ability to track enemies. The Medic can place a medical station which creates a pretty powerful field of healing and can revive people faster. The Defender takes less damage and can place a shield to give your team cover even in places that there are none. The Mechanic has a knack for finding vehicles and can summon an EMP drone to shut down enemy vehicles and I believe even your minimap radars. The Airborne class isn't quite out yet, but when it does come out, it will allow you to move your entire team from one point to the other very quickly. And then lastly, the Clown can summon a toy bomb, which then in turn can summon zombies, which attacks other units near them. The Clown also makes your team less likely to get attacked by zombies, which leads us to the second big difference of this battle royale in that often zombies 
zombies appear and attack you. Fighting these zombies risks bringing attention to your team, allowing other teams to know where you are. You can of course run away from these zombies, but that requires running, which can also bring attention to your team. So I recommend just killing them quickly and then finding cover to see if you were spotted. The third difference is that items are categorized in gray, green, blue, purple, and orange uniqueness levels. Finding an orange weapon or attachment with the same name as your gray weapon or attachment is going to have significantly better stats. The fourth change is that there is a boss location on the map. This boss is not that difficult to kill, especially if you have a team helping you, but it is important to note the main danger in killing this boss is that you are firing your weapon while in the middle of a giant open field, thus bringing attention to your team while you're in a vulnerable position. After you kill the boss, he will drop tons of purple and even orange items, so he is definitely worth it if you can get away with it. The fourth change is that vehicle weapons are actually worth using. They are incredibly powerful and often worth the risk of exposing yourself. I'm really glad they did this because honestly, in real life, a vehicle mounted gun is going to be far more effective than one you could hold. They also have a helicopter you can fly, which is pretty dope. And then the last change that I noticed is that the starting knife is much more powerful in that it can one shot anyone with lower than level two armor. However, the range is pretty low. So if you want to kill someone with your knife, it is important to get really, really close to them. So those are the main differences between this battle royale and others. If you'd like to learn more tips on battle royale in general, I would recommend checking out my tips and tricks video for PUBG Mobile. After that, Activision has stated plans to release a sixth game type. Unfortunately, that game type has not been released yet, so I can't give you tips on it. But when it is released, I will be sure to make a tutorial on that game type. So those are the main game types, but in addition to those 112 tips and tricks, I have 19 more for you. After crouching, you can hold down the button again to lay down completely. Tapping the crouch button while running will make your character slide, which makes you almost impossible to hit for that second. And it is also somehow faster than running itself. Make sure to check your mini map often. This will give you good map awareness and it will also keep you aware of where your teammates are so that if you hear footsteps coming in a different direction, you will know that they are from your enemies. If you click the thumb, it will allow you to emote or paint your emblem on a wall. But you can only do one at a time. So if you paint another one, then the first one will disappear. It seems like the game designed these just for decoration, but I have found that they can also be useful for marking a spot for your team on maps that are a little bit repetitive. For example, if you notice that an enemy keeps using a certain window or door, it might be nice to mark it and then tell your team about it in voice chat. When playing ranked games, it can be easy to focus on how many kills you get, but if for whatever reason you end up dying more times than you get kills, you are actually hurting your team. That being said, focusing on just your kill to death ratio is also not the best metric for how much you're helping your team, because if you are working as a team, sometimes your death can result in your team getting three extra kills. So the best way to ensure that you are contributing is to manage your kill to death ratio while sticking close enough to your team that you can guard one another's back. In battle royale mode, your class skills can be upgraded to more powerful ones by visiting these blue stations on the map. This is a really cool feature, but I'll have to talk more about that sometime in a future video. On the other game types, you get to use the three score streaks you have chosen. The number attributed to each score strike is the number of points you need to earn to use that score strike. Dying resets this number unless you have the persistence perk. The first one available is the UAV, which reveals all enemy locations on the map. Do not underestimate the power of the UAV. It has a low cost and knowing where your enemies are is incredibly helpful to your team. I have a feeling that this will be one of the favorite score streaks among the pros. The second one is the hunter killer drone, which is great when you're first starting off, but it's also pretty easy for advanced players to dodge. So I would not recommend using this as you increase in rank. The airdrop gives you a random score streak. Its price is pretty low, which makes it sound good on paper, but in functionality, it is my least favorite of the score streaks because it's a hassle to place it and it can often just give you a UAV or drone. The counter UAV can be incredibly effective if used right before your team engages with the other team, but it does require a lot of teamwork to maximize. The Predator missile is pretty amazing. Advanced players do get pretty good at getting into cover to avoid the missile, but if you are skilled enough at using it, you will likely be able to kill them before they can run for cover. The SAM turret is great for taking out enemy player score streaks as long as you make sure to place them where they have a good view of the sky. The sentry gun is a pretty good defense, but honestly, the best use for the sentry gun is to zone a player into making a bad decision. 
engine. It is pretty strong and does quite a bit of damage, but a skilled player can easily avoid them if left by themselves. I do not have the stealth chopper yet, but I've seen other players use it, and it seems to be incredibly effective at getting a few kills. And then lastly, the hover jet will rain 50 caliber machine guns on your enemies, which is amazing, but it also requires 1600 points, which is extremely difficult to get in between deaths. And then for my last tip, I recommend watching gameplay videos of talented Call of Duty players that explain what they're thinking while they play, so that you can learn from them. I am by no means a pro at this game, but I am pretty good, and I usually do a good job of explaining what I'm thinking as I play. I do not do gameplay videos on this channel, so if you're interested in watching my gameplay, make sure to check out my playlist from my other YouTube channel. Well, that's it guys, hope that helps. If you like the quality of this video and would like to see more, then you will probably need to subscribe or browse through my channel. YouTube gives a strong preference to videos that are released first, and sadly, my videos take a really long time to make. So by the time I finish them, they usually start at a disadvantage. That being said, my quality has also gotten me some really awesome subscribers, so I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and hope for the best. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.